it's good to join foreign admit as a mentor so thanks for the opportunity first of all and yeah so i'm harshal rathod so i'm pursuing my masters in environmental engineering at north carolina state university which is in raleigh north carolina so my journey to usa and particularly in a masters degree has been through my undergraduate undergraduate which was also in environmental engineering i worked for uh, two years and after that work experience i did apply to other universities and i found out that the north carolina state university has a rigorous and a very focused program and which was quite quite a bit a broad program as well it it provided quite a bit of opportunities for different course works and different fields beneath the environmental engineering so that's what i selected and yeah i am currently pursuing my masters so to tell me about uh, tell you about my profile so i had a kind of a, like a decent score for gre which was like 311 uh, 311 okay. and i had my toefl of 108 so that both were the deciding factors for my so i what i basically feel about that particular score is like that it lends you up somewhere so that your application does not get rejected okay. so when you when you means you there might might be different factors on which you could like back your application but for me as for my score they were the deciding factor that your application is not getting rejected there there is an benchmark that i have crossed and so that your application is accepted and it has been reviewed for me that was the case for me the application thing when I, when it comes to the application so the only thing that i feel like that was the seller for me was was my work experience and also the exposures that i found like in the internships i did many of the internships i did many of the exposure programs which involved me in working with consultings and industries so that all the mentions of that along with all the course structure the relevant course structure that you have in your bachelor's degree helps you to helps you to convince the uh, faculties and the uh, faculties over here that yes he he could perform good along with the lor stuff so for me sops and lor were the deciding steps that uh, defined my application as far as i remember so i applied to six universities out of them i was at a particular stage when the us policies and they were like not very decisive about what is going to happen with the h1b visa so i did apply to two of the canadian universities as well and the other four were particularly us uh, us universities okay. so when it comes to narrowing down the number of universities that you want to apply for and go ahead and apply for if you feel that this is particularly a safe university then that's that is the point where you stop so and means if you want to go and play between the safe like the ambitious and the safe universities you can apply to four to five universities that's a safe number to have and but that is completely upon the thing that you research so there are multiple points when it comes to the university selection that what point do you consider and what are the pre- previous admits that they have provided but when it comes to your profile you are an individual your profile would be differentiated so there okay. are many of my other friends as well who has very high high gre score and they have landed up into ncsu whereas my score is comparatively quite low but even though i landed up into ncsu as well so that is that is kind of like a decisive matter that you need to judge your profile and i feel like five to six universities is a proper uh match to go with and it's safe to play between 5 to 6 like two ambitious and then three safe and one like okay. that this is like below safe as well like okay. if everything goes wrong then this is one definitely i can get an admit any time yeah mm-hmm. 
so to talk about my tuition fees so my tuition fees is like 16500 usds per nine credits so when you when you see for like for my graduation i require 31 credits to complete okay. so that that is one thing that that a student must understand that you are supposed to see the per credit fee Okay. So when what is the right question to ask is like what is the per credit fee? Because okay. if uh, because a person coming to environmental engineering or civil engineering in NCSU is supposed to do thirty one credits to graduate, right? And a similar individual coming to NCSU has the same fees but is supposed to do thirty three credits to graduate. Okay. So the fees differ over there. Okay. So the per but the what is the similar thing that happens is the per credit fees remain the same. Okay. So so like for North Carolina State University, it comes down to I guess like eighteen thirty, eighteen thirty to eighteen fifty uh, USDs per credit. credit. Okay. Yes. So. so Yeah, yeah. And for the living thing, yeah, and uh, and for the living thing, particularly when you go for like a shared apartment, and which is like two BHK with properly means two BHK with a good carpet area and a uh, like four four sharings. So it would come down to like four fifty to four hundred to four fifty USDs per month, including okay. everything. So it acts. Uh, It has a buffer of twenty dollars as well, so it comes out to four thirty to four fifty dollars per month. So for environmental engineering, it is particularly the thing is like I am supposed to do ten courses, okay, ten into three, which is thirty, and one one credit is is added up when you attend sixteen seminars. so they they come from 16 academic seminars so when you attend those seminars then and you list them out and show your attendance then you are supposed to get a credit out of that okay. so that is what is the structure okay. so getting into that 10 courses so there must be like six courses which are from civil engineering and environmental department so that decides your core inside your department and another four could be a supporting course to your degree it could be like the stat in the in the statistics department it could right. be in the data analysis department if you want to go and learn about some softwares and anything so you can go into geographics and right. information information science and information technology branches so that is up to an individual so that is what decides and then out of all this 10 courses you are supposed to have minimum of 1700 level so which is a phd okay. level course so that when you combine all these things then you are supposed to have your graduate degree okay so this is what is the minimum requirement yeah. is needed when you are applying for graduation so uh, the very first thing that i like the most about ncsu is there are plenty of on campus jobs so none of us who intended to work any student who is coming to from india and was intended to work over here was unemployed i remember no one was unemployed everyone found a job the only struggle you get is continuing that 20 hours of job per week along with your curriculum load so academic load and balancing that with your job is the struggle that you would find out here at nc state but you would definitely land into an on campus job it can be within the dining it could be within the gym it could be as an instructor somewhere it could be like a proctor somewhere either like the uh, engineering online so video recording so there's are few of the options and there are plenty of other options as well and if you if a student is in contact with any of the seniors who is already has already done his graduation from nc state he would definitely land up to his job before even arriving over here so that was a particularly a case with me as well so i got an interview call for an on campus job a month ago before my visa itself so it was like a two months before i arrived in us so that is a good thing about north carolina state university and particularly for ta and ra 
the faculty and everything and the process for you getting selected is rigorous it is rigorous they would see your academic credits they won't provide you at the very first semester so if you feel that i would be taing in this particular course and, and that is not going to happen because you haven't uh, means the what is the mindset of the faculty over here is like they would be evaluating you for a year okay so so many of the students would graduate in three semester which is 1.5 year so by the time they would be the evaluation of the faculty has been completed they are already on the verge of getting graduated Okay. so uh, they have like a different uh, different mindset by in, when they come the, it is in the third semester they are supposed to find their jobs and everything is lined up back to back so i haven't seen much of the cases where a student has landed up into a dn ra for a non thesis program but if you are into a thesis program definitely you would get an ra and dn that is for sure so uh, i'll describe this in three major things so first it comes to it so when you talk about all the it students and everyone there is a research triangle park which is between north carolina unc chapel hill and duke university so there is a research triangle between all these things so all the major it firms from dell google facebook everyone is starting up their offices in this rtp area so all the employment and everything is coming to this particular region and north carolina is the only engineering is the only engineering university in north carolina which is like known for its engineering program so when you consider the south carolina and virginia so between this three states as well north carolina has a decent placement and everyone knows your graduation program over here your curriculum so you are it is kind of like an easy process to land up into a job and definitely the challenges are there to land up into the job and internships as well but yeah you are getting recognized somewhere and for for civil and industrial so we have winston salem which is kind of like a place near uh, near all the places like known for its manufacturing and manufacturing then there is other place around in the south carolina as well so there are like lot of uh, different different areas where there are many of the manufacturing units so which the sites like means they prefer hiring a local candidate so that increases your ability and your chances of getting hired over there in the very same region okay so it will this will go for the same for the job prospect after graduation or it might change something at that time okay so particularly the trend that i have seen over here in north carolina state university is like internship landing into an internship is much tougher than landing into a job so it might be difficult for you to land into a internship to start off with you might be doing it in a small company that you haven't thought of doing apart from doing it into a big firm and learning different things and getting exposure from the very start that might not happen to you but uh, definitely i haven't seen any of the cases where people are still struggling with their ead card on hand so they have like a job which is kind of like which is prior to their uh, ead card being starting off so that the, the picture for the job is quite good so many of the companies they don't want to step ahead and provide you a work visa over here they don't want to sponsor you at the very first so until unless it is a multinational company so they won't be open for you to come and work for them and even they be having a sponsorship program for themselves like for all the candidates open there so they might do it for you only so what does that mean like if the company is not hiring a lot of international students but they like your particular profile then 
and your particular profile you have been getting selected they would go ahead and sponsor you but that does not that is like a rare case when your profile is outstanding and company likes your particular profile but when it comes to uh, comes to like a generic scenario yes companies are reluctant to provide a sponsorship and the only key to that is like keep on applying you don't know which company would open up there because it is quite a better chance that they won't find someone who someone qualified as much as yourself or someone equal to your candidature to for that particular job profile you might get a call you might get selected so the only take on this is like keep on applying to as many as many companies as you can and focus on basically like uh, the companies which have priorly hired an international student so okay. that is what the picture looks like generally but okay. apart from that h1b is not in your hand so yeah so the best part of it is right now that you you are never homesick uh i would like to point this thing out that north carolina state university is like i have heard from many of my other friends as well i feel like we have kind of like the best indian student association okay. so it would start with the, your interaction with them would start up from the very beginning when you are in india so i had my airport pickup through them i had uh, means my lease did start before coming to usa but i was still staying at some of the seniors place who i did not know and they he had me for in his house for like a week or so so that i get adjusted everything like all the getting the new sim card and getting you enrolled through a bank account and all those things was quite smooth when you come the, so the incoming that i am talking about like the transition from india to the first week of the usa was pretty much very smooth when it comes to north carolina and when it comes to like the campus it has kind of the most uh, involving culture it has like so means there are events going on now and there which is good which it has like many of the academic seminars and symposiums going on so it provides you like a quite a bit of an exposure so if you think like i need a university which is not particularly focused on academics and everything just the academics then north carolina places somewhere between like a balancing between the non academic and the academic curriculum thing so it is what north carolina is good about and the infrastructure is by far the very good when you talk about the other universities above this there are there are only few like means when you talk about the state universities i guess there are none of the state universities which has such a good infrastructure so that is an additional point that you could exploit over here so yes so apart from north carolina state universities there are other universities as well so the nyu tandon is a good university uh, and it has a good placement records as well being in the, uh, being in that particular like the northeast region so nyu uh, nyu can do a, is a good option then here university of southern california is also a good option but then there is a trade off between the living cost and the uh, and the university it is by it is also a good university to go up so that depends upon an individual where he wants to trade off what he wants to trade off then north uh, north eastern is also a good university so these are the universities that if not uh, if north ncsu then these are the equal universities that you can land up and you can go through deciding upon your convenience and your comfortability uh, and above that like uh, definitely try for tamu tamu is a tamu has a good alumni program they have like a good structure for their course work so tamu is also a good one
so when it comes to deciding usa it was quite a bit of personal decision of mine to get into usa so particularly canada has a open immigration system that we feel like as of now right. so there are a lot of opportunities you would get into good placement things you would land up into good placement even though it does they do not see your universities they, if the profile is good they would definitely provide you are lending up into a good job that is for sure and it i've seen many of the candidates getting there so that is ha- that is what is happening with canada but for me canada is quite cold there is like ice and snow for like right. particularly six, a longer duration of the year so that is that is where i lost interest going to canada okay. and when you come up with europe thing so particularly europe has a structure where you where the people have struggled getting jobs much means the struggle is there in us as well but there is a higher struggle in european countries and getting there and working for long durations so uh, means so like yeah so european countries would be eliminated on that particular side okay. balance in both of them so so that was the reason that i chose usa and means apart from that every means when you come out of india and when you come out from indian communities right so when you study with international student you are tend to do your stuff independently rather than getting into groups and getting dependent on everyone and having a collaborative work that is that is like that is the soul of indian education and that is what messes up around every time so so that does not happen over here in the uh, different education system so that is what is good about the pursuing masters from a foreign country than pursuing from india okay. so getting into that point so all the application and the application stuff and all the documentation and uh, visa thing was completely means i even i had a i went through a consulting firm so they had me like they guided me over the complete process what are what is the prospective questions for the visa that they would ask you and what are the documents they would serve. so it was kind of like a kind of like a spoon feeding you can also say that it, they had a particular process that made up so uh, this is this relieves you when you are doing it for the first time you don't have any particular guidance with uh, like uh, you have a brother or sister or like very close friend who would guide you at every step so that is kind of like a rare to happen with you so if you are doing for first time i would definitely recommend you to go with the consulting form which would help you in all those processes so that you can it could means it relaxes you at the back of the mind that you have someone who is also helping you with your process so that is the first thing that helps you and secondly i felt uh, the difficulty the most difficult thing was getting down and narrowing to a particular university like okay. which university to select on and which to eliminate and why to eliminate that so that is a hurdle i could not find particularly an alumni in all of the universities that i couldn't have a word with before coming and if you find a particular alumni who is doing a masters in that particular universities he is off to speak good about the his universities right. so that word particularly not give a bias opinion about of his or her particular university so that that kind of happens and that is a kind of like a thing that was difficult for me to narrow down on the university so i would be graduating in may 2021 and my future plan is definitely is would i would be working for next 3 years it would be rather in an industry or in a into a consulting firm but it it has to be a particularly core thing which they would define particularly the university is supposed to define that yes this is a particular core thing that he is landed up landed up and he is working with 
so that is particularly <laughs> my my take about my future as well so i would be working until my h1b gets through so okay. i will be working for the next 3 years yeah so this is i guess i'll just tell you about an instance as well so okay. this is a question that you we discuss uh, even after coming over here okay. so yeah and i guess this is now is the right time to answer those question rather than thinking of prior there sitting in india you never know how you would perform firstly in during your first two semester you never know what is the academic load secondly you don't know how is your networking and your connection within this particular field how many consulting firms you know how many professionals do you know who would help you in job hunt calls from from the particular uh, means particular field you want to enter into so you never know this particular uncertainties which could land up to you so even if you might have thought about getting graduated in third semester which is like the uh, pre semester program thing you can definitely go with that but what if you means you are not able to answer this particular uncertainties so it would be the best time to answer that particular question when you are entered into your second semester and when the it's in the phase that you are in the middle of the second year then you are supposed to choose your course works so that is a particular time that you do it so you can either go for 3 4 3 okay and then graduate or you can go for 3 3 4 like that is also a good thing either you can go for 4 3 3 or 4 4 2 so that is the uh, different different option that you can evaluate but i would like to add to that if you know any of the particular seniors and if you can ask them what particular courses you want you means for a, is required for graduation and what are the courses that you recommend for me to take as per my interest level then get get to note get and note down all those courses list down all of them as semester wise and follow that plan so that would okay. be the best best particular option so when you consider this then you might be like you should be kind of like a careful between looking at but yeah means to tell you that particular answer it's like completely situational based because not all companies would keep you on probation okay. so it happens particularly a lot with when you come from an undergraduate background okay. from here when you apply you are being backed up with the university professors okay. so when i talk about environmental engineering in very to be very specific so my professors means when a consultant does not find a solution they come to our professors and they assign projects to them and that are the projects on which you would be doing your thesis on okay so that would be your research project Right. So the and when you perform there in your research project and you would be further you would be recommended from that particular professor to that consultant. So if you follow that particular path, so there is no probation. Right. There is nothing. There is like simple come in, please do come in and start working as soon as possible. Okay. So that is a one situation. But if you don't get into that particular situation, it is. it is good it is in a way good to have four semesters okay. so four semester it helps you to mold your profile a bit for a longer time so that you whenever you get a job you are perfectly uh, able to perform all the job descriptions and all the job duties that is required for you okay. so getting a good time and keeping a good time of that one, one semester is a good decision to have so performing uh, being an environmental engineer and performing work as an environmental engineer would lend you jobs in two different sectors either it is in the industry which is completely the manufacturing industries so you are supposed to be at a particular uh, industrial job site 
you would be looking after the environmental compliance the process water the wastewater and wash water and wastewater treatment plants you would be looking after their solid waste management plants you would be auditing the internal internal plants and the subunits for their environmental performances so that is what particularly uh, just about what you would be doing in an industry and when it comes to the consulting it is particularly it would be divided into three major parts so it would be rather air air, air water or solid so that would be defined that would be defined like where you want to go that would that is what you want to decide it quite earlier before coming to usa so uh, if you want to go into water or if you want to go into air or solid so when you sir, when you look for the jobs and apply for the jobs then you are supposed to apply for water waste water engineer or like air specialist or like solid waste management specialist or an engineer so these are like the few keywords that you want to search in when you uh, when you look up for the jobs and as a role for that so when you talk about water waste water you would be particularly asked to design a water waste water treatment plant or a water conveyance like the pump stations and the con- uh, for conveyance for the complete city or a complete area or let's say like you can also have like a small project of doing like the conveyance of the complete university okay. so that is what you would be this are the few projects that you would be working on so that is the broader profiles that you would okay. be working on yes you can also find jobs in such setups as well but uh, but that might not be particularly an environmental what an environmental engineering does with a graduation degree okay. so they would prefer to have a person who who they would like like to mold them okay. just to like uh, with a means if you have an undergraduate degree they would like to have you or they would like to mold you and then particularly they would tell you to do a particular course with a in a particular university which matches up with that job role and everything Okay. so when you are when you are getting a masters degree they know what is your particular interest about so they rather uh, do not prefer to mold you they just they want you to explore they want like the candidate to be exploited on what he knows so right. that is what is supposed to happen over there but definitely when you uh, there are particular jobs of environmental rem- remediations so you can opt for that as well and which is kind of like a good job to have which has a good pay scale as well good or like the equal pay scale and it has like a projects uh, projects all over the state and all over the uh, region so okay. that is also a good job to look okay. for so uh, what kind of it skills or what kind of software or what kind of statistics the environmental engineer uses in his daily routine or in his uh, course work and uh, and your suggestion for the upcoming students from india so that they can do any particular course in india to build up their profile so that they don't, they don't waste their time in usa and to upgrade their skills okay so to the very first you are means uh, as an environmental engineer you are learning all your designing and everything stuff so you are able to design a particular unit process so it is good to have you the knowledge of unit conversions so it is nothing regarding the it stuff right. but it is like a few uh, small small and minute minute points that would help you that would take you a longer way so unit conversions because we uh, over here we use metric system in india whereas over here they do not use metric system so all your liters unit converts into the gallons so it is kind of like a difficult to pictureize and imagine that particular unit immediately but when when it comes to solving all the assignments and homeworks uh, homeworks for the course work so you are supposed to uh, provide answers in all this food feeds and all the system uh, gallons and everything so that is understand all your units properly secondly uh, when it comes to like it software learn matlab or matlab or statistical 
uh, linear regressions and all those like the data analysis stuff it would help you in your projects and projects you could you would be able to take a project which has a lot of data so which happens a lot with environmental engineers that they are provided with a lot of environmental samples from different sites and you are supposed to evaluate them and come up with a equation so that could define a particular pollutant concentration at that particular region or a particular site so that what happens a lot with an environmental engineer so a statistical software like sas or jump could help you a uh, designing or a code language like matlab would help you so and apart from that <clears throat> get your command over uh, excel that is particularly required like okay. excel will if you do just know excel but if you know excel thoroughly it would it would work for you that is no harm i guess like course era has a good structure for it has like from the beginning intermediate to advanced excel thing okay. so course era is a good place to go and start your excel uh, excel knowledge and add your excel knowledge to that and secondly i would also add up to that like being an environmental engineer you are so the environmental laws and policy changes and changes and varies from region to region so learn learn the us uh, laws and policy there's a very good course from uc davis which is uc davis and there is also a good course from uc chapel unc chapel hill so these are like a two good courses which is there on course era as well named like environmental laws and policy go through it and uh, go through it and do that particular course so it would help you in getting to know like what is the mindset of the environmental engineers over here how they want to what is their long term view about how they want to uh, protect the environmental thing and how they want to achieve the sustainable goals so that would completely help you and that would uh, that would provide a better imagination okay. of what is going to happen to you when you come over here in usa okay so um, definitely so what you can do is like um first of all there would be like you are supposed graduation you are supposed to keep six courses which are from civil and environmental engineering department so now you are left with other courses like the other four courses so out of those four courses you can definitely go and look for the courses which is which matches up your interest for data sciences and data analysis so there are many of the core statistics courses so that you could for uh, do all those particular courses and you can apply for, as a position for data analyst but when you have a bigger picture for that there would be an another student who is applying with 10 courses because he he just opted for data analysis there would be a student who has like 10 courses in this while other you having like uh four courses in data analysis so there are many chances of your application to get rejected so means if you are coming into civil or environmental engineering then you are up to do that because because the competition would kill you the right. if you are not into doing good in your core thing then there is like a you will be having a hard time getting and landing up an internship and a job particular thing for environmental engineering so environmental engineering when you see it particularly gives you gives like an indian crowd a no idea about what it is so basically they think about like very white stuff that it would be mainly into ecological stuff and everything but it is more towards the manufacturing sites so when when a particular plant is having its production so how do you reduce your production how do you I'm sorry how do you use uh, how do you increase your production and right. decrease your waste 
so it is kind of a lean concept okay. that you apply being an environmental engineer and when you are when you achieve that particular level when you are using like a 100 or 99% of your raw material for a, in a manufacturing process and that one particular is your waste that you cannot do anything then how and how can an environmental engineer dispose that and treat that so that it does not have an impact or a footprint over the environment so okay. what you take is what you give is is what we do as an environmental engineer so if you take fresh water we give fresh water okay. so that is what we do if you use raw material we come up with an alternative that that particular raw material could also be grown up into the environment or we could provide an alternative which could help that particular uh, raw material defic- uh, to eliminate that deficiency of that particular raw material so this is how an environmental engineer is supposed to think and look after look after in a manufacturing process so okay. apart from that this was a particular motivation for me and secondly being a mechanical engineer you would be there in mechanical industries chemical chemical industries pharma pharma industries but being an environmental engineer you would be there in mechanical chemical pharma beverage food right. all the you know all the all the sectors so okay. it is a uh, be more broader than all the core branches so all this things like a lean and data analysis would definitely support your profile so i had my lean certification through my company through my previous organization that i was working with and that kind of helps me but if you come to north carolina state university you have a very good setup for lean six sigma and like a green belt and black belt courses so you could also enroll into that thing but definitely if you are there in india and you want to take this particular lean six sigma green belt course go for it but always remember you that particular course should be a project course not like just a certified uh, course the interview is based upon your project it would means if you think about that in a very layman term the certification term like lean six sigma certificate consumes like a five words in your resume whereas the project that you have done would take up like four to five lines and you that would be that four to five lines that you have worked on would kind of lend you the job the lean six sigma certification if you are unable to speak anything in front of an interviewer then it won't be helpful to you get into an internship or a job so okay that is what is important okay. to do that.